In the age of terrorism and political assassination, just how safe is the White House? And are there secret measures in place to keep the president and his family secure? The White House is sort of a mecca for all these nuts in the world who, who want to just go after authority. The president is the top enchilada, and so they will show up at the White House and uh, try to get in. Service takes those threats, uh, regardless of whether it's against the president, the vice president, members of the family, uh, the White House itself, uh, very seriously and investigates to make sure that they get a full understanding of exactly what that threat is and how to mitigate it. The first lines of defense against White House intruders are the visible deterrents, such as the iron fence lining the perimeter and the guards patrolling the White House grounds. But there are also security measures hidden from the public eye. The uh, White House grounds are protected by a complete array of sensors that detect heat, motion. If anything is detected, the Secret Service comes running. The uniformed officers of the Secret Service in particular are in charge of guarding the White House grounds and the White House itself. And they have uh, dogs that will attack an intruder. Uh, if necessary, they will shoot the intruder to kill him. The Secret Service is one of the most professional organizations. They put their lives on the line every single day, protecting the president. Over the years, a number of armed or otherwise dangerous intruders have attacked the White House. In 1974, Robert Preston, a young army private, hovered above the South Lawn in a stolen helicopter. White House guards responded with a barrage of gunfire, forcing Preston to land. Slightly injured and clad in fatigues, the hijacker was apprehended and admitted for psychiatric observation. I, George Walker Bush, do solemnly swear. I, George Walker Bush, do solemnly swear. Gunshots, the sound of gunshots on the south side of the White House. In February 2001, two weeks after George W. Bush's inauguration, Robert W. Pickett, a former IRS employee with a history of mental illness and suicide attempts, waved a gun at tourists and police outside the White House, firing several shots. A Secret Service agent shot him in the knee after a 10-minute standoff. November 11, 2011, Oscar Ortega Hernandez, a 21-year-old man from Idaho, fired a semi-automatic assault rifle from a passing car. The bullets struck near the residential quarters. Recently, you had a situation where there was uh, someone shooting at the White House. Fortunately, they had the appropriate level of security there that prevented any penetration of those rounds from actually getting into the interior of the White House itself. But one of the most unusual attacks on the White House came on September 11th, 1994. Just before midnight, Frank Corder, a 38-year-old Army veteran suffering from depression, stole a Cessna plane and flew it towards the White House. Seven minutes out, air traffic controllers stationed at the National Airport picked up the Cessna on their radar screens. But it was too late. Corder crashed the plane directly on the South Lawn, missing the White House by just a few feet. While reports indicate Corder committed suicide, many speculated that he was, in fact, shot down. Could there be, as some believe, anti-aircraft missiles on top of the White House? I mean, people just assumed that the White House uh, had all of those defense mechanisms in place, and when this Cessna flew into the White House, people were asking, 
how can that happen? But since then, I can assure you, there have been defense mechanisms put in place that would prevent that sort of situation from happening again. If you go back in the Washington Post, when we were in the Bush administration, and there's a picture on the front page of some systems that were installed post 9/11, so you can unearth your own secret that way. But I don't want to. I don't want to talk about it. But with all the corridors, offices, tunnels, and secret areas of the White House, is there one area that is the safest and most secure of all? A place where the president and his family can go in the event of a national emergency? Obviously, I'm not going to be able to uh, say specifically, but just let's say that there are ways of moving the president and the first family around in the event uh, that there might be a threat in the White House. Some speculate that the safest area of the White House is the secret underground facility located below the East Wing, known as the PEOC, or President's Emergency Operations Center. Originally constructed as a bomb shelter by President Franklin Roosevelt during World War II, the PEOC has been designed to withstand a nuclear attack. It's in the East Wing basement. It's an old World War II bomb shelter with a great big heavy door full of bunks and, and canned foods and canned water and all that. Cheney and uh, Condi Rice and a few other people rode out the storm on 9-11 in the Piak. With the contingency plan seamlessly followed on 9-11, the nation and its leaders can be confident that the most public of private homes is today safe and secure. For over 200 years, the White House has more than met George Washington's original intention to house, serve, and protect the President of the United States and his family. But perhaps the greatest secret the White House holds is that each passing president is a temporary resident in what is actually a home that belongs to every American. I look at, at our family and, God, what a blessing. I mean, to live there at that very unique time, this is America's home, it's, it's not our home. You want to cherish it, you want to uh, enjoy it, but you want to respect it. It's not the first family's home, it's America's home.